Spirit of division. You know, you can say I'm of Christ, and that seems like the best answer. But if you say it and it's divisive, it's wrong. Right? It's the body of Christ. How do you, take, how do you divide the body of Christ? Well, you can't. Even though there's many members, it's one body. You see, we have to remember that. We have to remember that when we, are, when we do have conflicts in the church, that we are dealing with them as family. Family's family. Right? I mean, you can't, you, can, you, you can't choose your family. That's been given to you by birth. Right? So, um, but then I want to skip over. Uh, well, he, he, he goes on and talks about the gospel of God, that it's the power of God, this gospel. And I want to skip over to chapter 2. And he says, I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declared unto you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know... It. And look at that. There's that testimony of God. He says, when I came to you... He's going back. Paul's... Uh, uh, what's the word when you... Not daydream. When you think back. He's remembering. Right? And he, he's remembering when he came to them. He was re remembering that when he came, he didn't have excellent, excellency of speech. Paul was not what you would have said, a good orator. You know, the, the Greek culture, they really admired somebody who could speak well. Right? They admired strength. You know, they had the Olympics. They, could, they, they admired people who could speak well. You know, they admired wisdom. You know, like if you... If you uh, had great wisdom. That was something that would make you admirable in their culture. <clears throat> Everything all, where's, where's Mike in here? He went out, Curtis went off. Okay, I was going to ask if everything was okay. I see all these people leaving. Didn't know if I'm about to roll up my sleeves and, and uh, take Ken with me. <laughs> he says, but I, I didn't come to you with these things, with, with man's wisdom. You know, Paul didn't go to Wisdom 101 and learn how to tickle the ears of people. But what did he come with? The testimony of God. He came with God's testimony, God's story. And that's the Gospel. Verse 2, For I determined, Paul made it an act of, uh, of his will that he was not going to come to them. He says, I determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and Him crucified. That's the, that's the gospel, isn't it? That Jesus Christ was crucified for you, put in a grave, and raised again. And so, and then he says, And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. So, do you have, you think that you don't want to witness because there's fear there? Do you get weak? You know, when I get up here to preach, I get weak. I get a little weak, I get a little nervous. I get fear that comes on me. It's not like a gripping fear, but it's a, it's a fear. And sometimes I think it's just pride. Sometimes fear can be pride that we just, we don't want to look like we don't know what we're saying in front of other people because that will be a negative reflection on me. I've got to have the right words to say. I've got to have this, this sermon ready and this sermon and in, in all these points. And Well, I can't do that. That's just, I tried, and it just doesn't work for me. There, there may be people who can do that. I can't do that. So many times, I, I've, not to me, I don't study. I do it, but I trust God when I get up here that He's going to do what He wants to do. And if He wants to change the course of the, of the stream here, that He has the liberty to do it. Amen? Amen? Yes. Um, but He says, I was with, in, with weakness, fear, and trembling. You ever, you ever had your knees knock before? You ever get the shakes when you have to do something? You have to speak in front of somebody? <clears throat> well, Paul had that. But you know, you know what true courage is? Courage is not where you don't have any fear. But courage is where you press on. Where you press on in spite of the fear. Where you let love swallow that fear up. That, that fear that you have to speak to a neighbor or witness to somebody. or Let the love of God swallow it up. And press forward. And, and you know what? It's like when you do that, once you step, once you open your mouth, once you take a step, it's like God's there. You know, Peter had to take that step out of that boat, right? He had to take that first step. 
And it was there. He didn't sink. And he was on his way. And so, and then he says in verse 4, My speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom. You know, people can come and they can, have, they can uh, say things and say it in a way that, man, you just, it kind of overwhelms you. That, man, they just know how to speak. They know how to put things. And God can use people like that. But God can also use people like us. I don't have that. You know, God's not looking for the vessel that's polished and that's uh, uh, got it all together. You know, we can glory in our infirmities. Paul says, I glory in my infirmities because when I'm weak, then I'm strong. You see, the grace of God is sufficient for you in whatever you, God calls you to do. When God calls you, He's got the grace for it and He's got the giftings for it. It's there. And so, uh, you, you, uh, you don't have to, we don't have to look to strength in the sense that like the world does. The world despises weakness. Right? It, it looks down upon weakness. We want to be strong. Well, well, we can glory in our infirmities. You know, I, I realize my weak, that I have weaknesses. That I got problems. But I also realize that, hey, God's grace is sufficient for me. God's grace is enough. And that in my weakest state, His grace is coming through strong. And His grace is made perfect. And so Paul was trusting in Jesus. Now here's where I'm getting to. The main thing. But he says, I'm going to read verse 4 again. My speech and my preaching were not with enticing words of men's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power. Demonstration of the Spirit and power. That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. You know, I want to look a little bit at that tonight. The power of God. We need the power of God in our church. Amen. You know, we need to have the power of God. Now, what, what do you, when I say power of God, what comes to your mind? What do you think of? Healing. Miracles, Miracles healing, right? Do you, you know that the word power is many, is in the Greek many times is dunamis. We know there are times when the word miracle is used and it's the same word. So definitely, it involves miracles. Um, like I'll give you an example here. He says, this is Peter preaching in Acts 2. You can just listen. You men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs 